Okay, hey everyone. So I had a requirement recently around being able to parse a CSV file from a workflow in Intex Workflow Cloud. Now, the first question, of course, I had was, where is that uh, CSV file going to be? Right, it needs to be somewhere for the workflow to be able to read it. So there was a few, you know, few possibilities. One, it could live somewhere. Uh, you have a URL to it, and maybe somebody fills in a form, pushes in the URL into a field, submits it, it kicks off a workflow, it reads that, and it does like a, a web service call, does like an HTTP get, uh, and gets that file. The other option is to use one of the EFSS systems, so something like Box, uh, or you can see here Microsoft OneDrive. Now, I'll show you a couple of different scenarios that I actually use. I use both these environments. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, go over here under Connections, and you need to make sure that you have a connection to your environment. In this case, we've got a, uh, a connection here called Box Cephalo, so that's my environment where I'm going to upload my CSV file. Same thing goes for if you, you know, want to use OneDrive, you can do the same thing right, th oops, right there. And it's just a matter of just clicking on Add New, selecting the environment, for example, Box, and, uh, and creating a connection. Now, when it comes to actually building a workflow, right, what you're going to do here is you actually want to capture the event that somebody uploads a file to Box. So you click on your Start Event, you select which environment, so I'll do box for this one. Here's my option for new file or new folder, so those are two events. The other one we have here is called an in-text workflow for box. So if you haven't seen that, that's actually pretty cool. That's the ability to actually say, I'm gonna have some collaboration happening on some documents inside box. And then once all that collaboration is done, whoever the owner is can actually go in there and say, click on the document and start a workflow, right? So you can kind of manually start a workflow directly from the box environment. What we're going to do here is we're going to start a new workflow based off of a new file. I'm going to select my environment and then I can click on this little button here that will kind of read the box environment and tell me what I want to use. I'm going to look at this folder here called CSV files and then I'm good. Now you also have the ability to say which uh, parameters do you want to get from that. So when a file is uploaded, I want to get the ID, name, file variable, path, etc. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually jump out of here, and I'm going to go back to an actual workflow that I've already built. And you see here, it looks pretty fancy, right? Looks like we're going kind of all over the place. There's a bunch of boxes. But I'm going to show you what we're actually doing here. So first off, I'm going to open up a file for you. So here is my test22.csv. Right, it's opened up in Excel, but it's basically a comma separated file with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and A, B, C, D. Those are those are the four, uh, three lines, four columns. Okay. So here's what we're doing. Even though in here we have the ability to get a file variable, the file variable is more for internal purposes, right? You're not going to be able to read the contents of that at this stage uh, of what's actually in here. You can use this file variable to, say, move a document from maybe one folder to another, maybe one EFS system to another, maybe attach it to a Salesforce record, but you can't really read the contents of it. So we're going to have to do something to be a little bit smarter, and this is what I came up with. There's an action, and I'll actually expand this section out here. There's an action under the category box, and the same thing exists for OneDrive, called share file link. Now what this is doing is saying, I'm going to talk to my same environment, I'm going to pass in my path parameter, and I'm going to store a download link and a view link. Now I don't really need the view link, I'm not really using that, but the download link is basically gives you a direct link to, link to that file. Now I do want to give you guys a heads up that in order to be able to use this, you do need to have a paid version of Box, right? So if you have a free version, a free account to use Box, this part here will actually not work. And I've tried that out. So you definitely do need to have a, uh, a fully kind of paid version uh, of Box or license for Box. Okay, so now we have uh, that. Now I'm storing it in something called text redirect URL. That's going to be my, my variable. I'm going to show you one other thing that's really important here. So you can just ignore some of these. Right here, I have something called text status code, and I've set it to 301. Now, 301 and 302 
uh, are HTTP status codes. They basically tell you that whatever you're trying to get, uh, it's actually trying to redirect you to get it somewhere else. Right? So I'm just setting it for 301 as a default value. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have this loop action called start loop. So basically, I want to continue looping while status code is equal to 301 or 302. Right, so if I get, and that's why if I didn't have that as a default value, it just wouldn't go into this loop. So that's why I set the default. Okay, let's close that. So what we're doing now is we use a call web service action. All right, call the web service. We're doing an HTTP GET. We're passing in that URL that we received from the file, and we're storing the file contents, the text, the actual headers, and the status code. All right. So then what we do is we're just checking to make sure that if we received a 301 or a 302, so we're trying to download that file, and if it just worked, then we have file contents and we can continue on with the workflow. But if we received a redirect URL, I want to go and do a little bit more work here. And you can see right here, we're actually doing this regular expression. It looks pretty ugly. Right? We're basically pulling out a bunch of data. Now, I'm gonna see if I can actually find an example of what that looks like so that I can tell you why we're actually doing that. All right, let's go back. So bear with me. Let's go here. Okay, let's see. So here you can see I'm getting a bunch of data. And this is because I received a 302 in this case. So 301 or 302 being the redirects. Now what that regular expression was right here, you can see it says location, is we're actually pulling out right there. So you can see there it says location. I'm actually saying, get me everything between this and that, right? So that's gonna give me the new redirect URL. Okay, so that's really all that. So it's an ugly uh, expression, and it's probably an easy way of doing it. Uh, I'm by far not a regular expression expert, but I do use it where needed. Uh, so this is me just pulling out the bit that I need, storing it back into that text redirect URL. And then we're just doing a check here just to make sure that it's not empty. That's all. So the reason why this is in a loop is because I found that with Box, when I get the first URL, right? Somebody uploads a file and I and I go and get that share link. I get that download link. That first uh, URL, when I try to get it, it gives me a redirect URL. Then when I try to go through and try to get the file with a redirect URL, it gives me another redirect URL. So that's why I put this into a loop. So this will just continue doing it until it finally gets to a URL where it actually gives me the data uh, that I need. So that's why the loop is here. So let's minimize that. All right, so now once we've done that, once we've done the loop and we've actually retrieved the file contents, then we have this apply regular expression again, but this time we're doing a carriage return line feed. So we're actually saying, take the file contents, which is the CSV file, and split them up by carriage return line feeds into a collection called collection of lines. I actually don't need this count items in collection, so I can get rid of that. And then what we're doing is we're, again, we're doing a loop and we're iterating through each line. And again, we're doing a regular expression, but this time we're splitting on a comma. And now we're splitting it into columns. Now with my CSV file, I actually had four columns here. And you'll notice here that once I do the split, I have this run parallel paths. I have three branches. I'm getting the first, second, and third value. Well, of course I realize I have a fourth value. So let's add another branch. And then I can say, get fourth value. I'll go over here, do a copy and do a paste because I'm getting an item from the collection. Now, when we're pulling out values, the fourth value is actually the third index. And the reason why that is because in Nintex Workflow Cloud, kind of like with development, when you have a column indexes or indices into a, col into a collection, start with zero. So the first column is zero, the second column is one, etc. So I'll need a new item here, new, sorry, new variable. So we'll go text fourth value in 
the line, click on add, come, oops, come down here, select it, click on cert, there it is there. And then the only other thing I want to do is actually copy this log because each one of these log actions is logging the data. So change that to fourth, right, delete that, insert that last variable, and we'll do a publish. All right, so while it's doing that, as soon as it comes up, what I'm going to do is go over to my box environment. You'll see I have test 21 is my latest. I'm going to upload test 22. Right, there it is, test 22. And then what I'll do is I'll go to instances. And you'll see straight away I have 10.06 and I have a workflow in progress. It's the box process CSV. I can go in here, still says in progress because it's processing that file. Let's refresh. Still in progress. Let's refresh again. Completed. So I can scroll down here and get an idea of what it's done. So it is, uh, it's created the share file link. It's started the loop. It's basically iterated through the loop, tried to do the call a web service. It says, did you receive a redirect URL? Yes, we did. So now we have to extract the redirect URL. And then we go through the loop again, try to call a web service. Say, did we receive a redirect URL? Yes, we did. So we received another one. Now let's apply the regular expression go through the loop again, try to call the web service. In this case, it says, run true if received the redirect URL. Well, we didn't. So we're going to jump out of this loop. And now you'll see here, we're applying a regular expression to split it by lines. All right, so we get individual lines. Now we're going to iterate through each line. We're going to split by comma. And then we have that run parallel paths. And if I scroll down here, you'll see for the first line, we got, we actually received one, two, three, and four. For the next line, we received five, six, seven, eight. And then for the last line, we received A, B, C, and D, All right? So pretty straightforward, right? Wasn't that hard to do? It was just that we had to, oops, we had to cater for the fact that we get, we are getting redirect URLs uh, from Box uh, with that download link. Okay, so that was Box. Now, how would you do it if you wanted to do it with OneDrive? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. So if I move to this workflow, right, all this logic here, oops, right there, the looping for each, uh, iterate through each line, splitting by commas, all that sort of stuff, that's all going to be the same. I don't have it in this particular workflow, but I wanted to show you that in this case, you just use the OneDrive share file link, same sort of thing, you're storing the download link, then you make a uh, core web service, to do uh, HTTP GET, and you store the content. The only difference I found was that with OneDrive, you're getting a URL to a file, and it's a direct URL to that file. So there's no redirects that seem to be happening, so I don't have to have uh, that sort of more complex logic there. So that's where it is at the moment. But you can see it's pretty straightforward that you can now have somebody upload, or it could be somebody, but it could also be a system, upload a file to Box, to OneDrive. Uh, I haven't tried Dropbox and uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Citrix Sharefile and Google Drive. So I haven't tried those yet, uh, but my guess would be same sort of functionality. Let's see, with, with Sharefile, I think, yeah, you still have the Sharefile link. So that should be doable as well. So like I said, pretty straightforward. You could have a person upload a file to one of these systems. You could have a system, some sort of computer system that's actually generating regular CSV files and uploading it to, you know, say, Box, and then having a workflow run, parse it, and do some stuff with it. Hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, I'm going to uh, export this workflow. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my workflows, and I'll come over here, click on Export, and I'll share an export key with you guys. So if you need to download it, uh, definitely do that and play around with it. You know, you'll need to modify it a little bit in that uh, you'll need to create your own connector for Box, uh, but definitely be able to use it, give you a nice starting off point, and hopefully if you, uh, hopefully it'll work for you straight straight away. If not, you know, reach out to me, post some comments at the end of the blog post, and maybe I'll be able to point you in the right direction. All right, thanks for your time, guys, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll come up with some more blog posts and videos in the near future.